So you're looking at getting into game development. Now, there are a lot of great engines out there for when you're starting game development. There's Unity, Unreal Engine, and Godot is another really good one that's been getting a lot of attention recently. Um, it's still fairly new, um, but it you know it's pretty decent. My personal favorite is Unreal Engine. And I remember when I first started working with any sort of game development, Unreal Engine kind of intimidated me starting out. I it took me quite a bit of time to actually figure out how it all worked. So. You know, I spent uh, quite a bit of time working with Unreal Engine, and so now I'm going to start this tutorial series to show you guys how to how to set up Unreal Engine, and then I'll show you guys some of the basics of what Unreal Engine has to offer, so you guys can use it in the best possible way in whatever game you're trying to develop. So we're going to go and jump right into it. So to install Unreal Engine, the first thing you have to do is you have to install the Epic Games Launcher. Now, when I was looking through this just to make sure I could find a legitimate download for you guys. Uh, I found that there's actually a couple now. Uh, one that Epic Games supplies through the Epic Game Store, which is this one right here, and then the other one is Unreal Tournament. I've personally always used the Unreal Tournament one, it's the one that I originally used to download the Epic Games launcher, but if you want to use the, the one on store that's fine, I'll go and leave a link to this, to this one right here uh, down below in the description. Once you get, once you open the page, you should be prompted with something like this that you should be prompted to download it. Now I'm in Firefox so I actually got a prompt like that to download the installer. I already have the installer downloaded so I'm not going to worry about that. Now you can see it's available for both Windows and Macs. I want to leave a, a little note here. Um, I've run Unreal Engine on a Mac before, uh, a MacBook to be clear, um, and I've run into performance issues in the past so I'm not sure if it's the same for every Mac product, but for me and my personal experience running it on MacBook, you do run into personal you do run into performance issues. For that reason, I tend to run it in Windows, but that decision is up to you. Once once you have this downloaded, go ahead and open up your downloads folder and run the installer. It'll go and pop up. And then once it's popped up, go and press that install button. And it will actually prompt you to say to see if you actually want to download the Epic Games Launcher. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to worry about this step right here. I'm just going to go and close out of here and close down all this. Once you have the Epic Games Launcher, when you first when you first open it up, it'll actually ask for a sign in. Uh, I'm already signed in, so uh, I don't have to follow that step. Once you've done that, go over here to the left where it says Unreal Engine, and you want to jump over here to Library. So this is where you're going to manage every install that you have of Unreal Engine. Now, for the moment, I have 4.22 and 4.25 installed, uh, 4.25 being the most recent. Uh, 4.22 I have installed for another project that uh, I've been working on. Um, now, if you don't see a little grayed out box here, just press the plus and you'll get another little grayed out box so you can create another install. You can also see that you can go back to older installs as well if you'd like. It'll just give you this little gray box and you can go down, choose whichever install you want and just press install. It'll certainly take a while, so you know, set aside some time for the install process. And then you'll have Unreal Engine installed. Once you have it installed, you should get something that looks like this. One of these little blue boxes. These this is what you you'll use to open up the the project creation. I guess you could call it. Uh, so you go and press launch. So once the Unreal Project Browser opens, you should get some. Oh, you should get a window that looks a little something like this. Now you can see that there's up here. You have all your recent projects, if you have any. Um, you can see that I have a couple. And over here, you'll actually see project categories. Now, for this tutorial, I'm going to actually focus on games. Once you click on games, you can actually see that there's several different templates that they give you to work with. Everything from first person to VR. Um, I do want to say that in the future, I will. I am planning to do some VR tutorials. So if you want to stick around for that, maybe hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I'll, I will be doing those in the future as well. But for now, I'm just going to focus on first person, as I think it's one of the best best ones to use as an example for this one. 
Once you have that done, uh, you can see you can choose between Blueprint and C++. Now, there is an argument to be made between Blueprint and C++. Uh, one of the more popular ones being that if you create a project using only Blueprints, performance will not be as great. Um, there are ways around this that Unreal provides, such as nativization. I'm not going to bother with any of that right now. Because C++ is something I'm more comfortable with anyways, I'm going to go and choose C++ so I can show you guys just a little bit. Um, and then you can choose what kind of quality you want. Uh, ray tracing. My computer personally can't handle it, so I'm going to leave that disabled. Um, and then you can choose between desktop or mobile, and if you want to have any start content. Uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to go and leave the start content in, because I'm going to go through and show you guys just a little bit of the start content that comes with it. And then down here you can choose where you want to save your project and whatever project or name you want to do. For this one, I'll just go ahead and name it tutorial. There we go. And again, it's going to take quite a while to actually build the project. Um, so you do want to kind of get comfortable and just wait it out. So once you have Unreal Engine open, you should see something, you should get a window that looks a little something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the basics of what you see before you. So in the middle you have the scene view. So this is what you're going to use to look around your scene. And there's a couple different ways of going about navigating it. The one that I tend to prefer is holding down the your right mouse button. And then you can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around. So it's, it's a little bit like playing a first person shooter or something like that. Um, which is why I personally prefer using it this way. You can also hold down the left mouse button and you'll kind of get this, I guess you could kind of call it like a panning more of. Um, uh, if you hold down your, your uh, scroll wheel, you will actually be able to move up and down like this. And you can actually use your scroll wheel itself to actually zoom in and out of the scene. So you'll be able to navigate around your scene using whichever method you, you prefer to use. Uh, like I said, I usually prefer to use the right mouse button and then I just move around the scene using, <clears throat> using WASD. So some of the other things that you have here in the scene, I'm going to go and start up here. So you have save does exactly what you would expect for it to do. It'll actually save whatever you have in the scene. <clears throat> then you have source control. Um, if you're new to Unreal Engine, um, you probably don't have to worry about this. Um, this is for specific circumstances for the most part. <clears throat> you have modes, um, which will actually allow for you to switch. You can actually do landscape foliage, brush editing all this kind of stuff. Uh, then you have the content browser, which is actually down here as well, and I'll go over that in a second. The marketplace, which if you actually look at the Epic Games launcher, you can actually see the marketplace in there as well. <clears throat> then you have settings. Um, project settings tends to be what, um, what you spend the most time in, project and world for the most part. Plugins you may need to mess around with a little bit once you first create a project and maybe touch in here and there. <clears throat> but for the most part, you don't really need the plugins. It tends to open by default. Um, then you have blueprints, uh, cinematics, you have build and compile, um, which for the most part, building you may need to use regardless of if you're using blueprints or C++. Compile you really only need to use if you're doing any sort of C++ coding. Then you have play and launch. So these two are probably going to be your two most important out of everything up here uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so the play will actually allow for you to play in several different ways. So you have selected viewport which means it'll play in here. You have mobile preview and new editor window uh, which these both the, New editor window does basically the same thing as selected viewport, except it opens it in a second window. Um, mobile preview will show you what it'll look like if you're developing a mobile app. 
you have VR preview, then you have a standalone game simulate, um, and then down here you'll have how you want to spawn your player. Uh, usually I prefer to spawn at whatever the default is so I can get a full experience for what's going on. And then you have some multiplayer options, which in the future I do intend to make a multiplayer tutorial if you want to stick around for that. Um, and you can change how you want to do that. Um, I'm just going to go and leave it at offline. And you have launch over here. I don't really have a whole lot of things I can launch on at the moment. If you have an Oculus Quest and you're planning on developing for an Oculus Quest, this is where you'll go as well. Or if you're trying to develop for any other Android device or iOS or anything like that. Um, like I said, I don't really have anything here that will actually work well for launching like this. But that's essentially how you'll do it. Um, and then you can just go and press these. So if I go and press play, you can actually see that I can actually move around the scene. Um, so yeah. Um, they actually do give you a little bit to work with here when you first open a scene. <clears throat> now over here you have the world outliner, which will basically show you everything that you have in the scene. So you have big wall here, which is that wall right there as you can see. Then you have big wall 2, which is that one. And you can just kind of cycle through all these and see everything that's in the scene. Um, so, yeah. Um, then you have your details, which will actually show you whatever details on whatever it is you're currently clicked on. So you can see right now I'm clicked on the cube. And you can see all the components that make up a cube. Um, and I'll go over a little bit more about components and actors here in a second. Then you have an output log, a message log, and your content browser. Message log and output log are mostly used for checking for errors or anything like that. Um, output log you can also use a little bit for debugging here and there. Uh, if you want to like print things out, make sure certain things are running as they should. Uh, then you have the content browser as I said. Um, I usually prefer to tab this out. I personally don't understand why they hide this to begin with. I feel like it doesn't help out a whole lot. And you can kind of go through and you can see uh, some of this stuff is just kind of the default things that they have. So for example, if we go into here, you can actually see these are the arms that they actually use on the player right here. Um, so you can actually see how this all works. Um, so if I go and open this up, for example, you can actually see this is actually the animation that is used for the hands. I'm not going to go too into detail into this in this video since this is just kind of showing you the basics. But you can kind of go through and you can see all different things that you have here. Um, then you have your audio character. This is just kind of some of the default stuff that they throw in. Uh, the starter content was the stuff I decided to add in. So you can actually see that we have, for example, these blank walls and floors. They give you a few audio assets to work with, blueprints, um, which was something I did want to go over, which is why I did this. Uh, because blueprints are, for anybody who's new, blueprints are probably going to be what you spend most of your time in when you're starting out. Um, so this is what a blueprint looks like. Um, but actually, let me wait for this, because there's one more thing that I have not yet talked about, and that's the uh, some of the actors that they actually give you to start out with. Nothing too special here, but I figured I'd better go over it just real quick. <clears throat> um, so you have like, you can drop in cones, for example, or you can drop in lights. Um, you have all this different stuff. You can drop in volumes. Um, so you have all this kind of stuff that you can drop in. Um, so yeah. Now going back to the blueprints. Um, this is how Unreal Engine tends to do their, do all their various, um, manage all the different things that you see within a scene. So if you actually look, you can actually see that this is an actor. Or rather, a, its parent class is an actor. Um, and that does have some significance um, when you're going, when you're developing um, different things that you'll see in the scene. So again, you kind of see all this basic stuff you have around here. Unreal Engine works with a lot of actors and pawns. And what these are is everything that you see in the scene is basically an actor or a pawn. So 
this right here, this whole thing, is actually an actor, along with this cube. Uh, this, I believe the default player is actually a pawn, if I recall. Um, which is actually, its parent class is an actor as well. Um, so you have all these different things that are actors. Now, I mentioned components a little while back, and that's what this part of the uh, detail shows you. This is a component. Uh, let's, oh, I meant to click on the player. These are all components, capsules, meshes, all this kind of, all these things are all components. At, and what a component basically is, is it means that it belongs to that actor, and it allows for, and it basically means that that actor has control over those components. Um, that's really the best way that you can see it. Um, so that's basically how that all works. Um, so, for example, I can go into here. I can just drag this into the scene. If I drag that up, you can see that it's a fully fledged thing. It even has its own light source down here. So this is actually generating light for you to use. Um, so that is how all that works. Um, now jumping back over here into blueprints. So the difference between blueprints and C++ is, well, it's not subtle, I'll say that. Um, this is what blueprints looks like. Uh, they do not stick anything in there. That's interesting. Um, so this is basically what blueprints are. It's a it's a little user interface like this where you basically drag things out and drop them into that. Um, GUI, I believe, is the correct term for that, if I recall. Um, so this is kind of what blueprints looks like. Um, so you can see that this is a construction script, which is how, which means that this is how it'll function once you start up. Um, so yeah, and then event graph is meant for everything during gameplay. Um, I won't go too much into this, but if you guys want to have a look at all this stuff, you guys can create your own project and have have a look at this. You can see that all these are blueprints as well. Um, they just don't show anything because this part isn't technically visible. Uh, it's only visible in the editor. And you can see that all it does is create an effect, so it doesn't have an image like this one does. Uh, we can go into this one. You can see that this one has an image. So yeah. So I did also want to show you guys real quick uh, some C++ stuff. So it actually did open it for me when I created the project. Um, so we can actually dive into here real quick as well. I can give you guys a quick little look at, let's go and see our character. Um, so if we go and open up the header and CPP file, we can actually see these are all the components that make up the player. So you can see we got skeletal meshes, which um, are quite important for Unreal Engine. And then we have all these other parts. Um, some motion controllers and things like that. Um, motion controllers are actually used for VR. Um, so yeah. So this is basically the basics of Unreal Engine. Um, there is a lot more to it, uh, as there's a lot more you can do with Unreal Engine. But since this is just an intro tutorial, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to leave it at this. This will be some of the basics of Unreal Engine. So. If you guys found this fascinating, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, as I said, I'll be doing more tutorials in the future, and I will especially be covering things like VR in the future. So if you guys enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, as I said, I'll be doing more tutorials in the future, and I will definitely be touching on VR in the, in the future as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to develop VR games, I'll be showing you guys some of the, thing, some of the basics for VR development as well. So, until next time. See ya.